Good morning. <laughs> Are you here? Yes. Got a few people. Okay, so you know what to do. You got to check in. Um, and I want to uh, welcome you to this. To the I, I just sometimes when you go to um, go live on these on these streams, uh, it's like it hangs up. I mean, the technology is good, but it's not perfect. Well, at least for me. There is the link for the topic I'm going to talk about this morning early on, um, window replacement cost. And it's um, a really interesting column that I wrote, I don't know, about four days ago. And it contains a story at the beginning as to why I wrote it. So I recommend you read it because you could be the person in the story very easily. Uh, and it's... Um, it's one of these columns. I, I love writing columns like this because many of my competitors and peers, they kind of just regurgitate. Um, I don't know what to, I'm, I'm going to just call it hype or that what, what it is, is uh, I think it's kind of an ethical behavior. In other words, they, they, they try to cozy up to, to the window companies because it's all about money, all right? How many times have I talked about on the live stream uh, Game of Thrones, all right? I, I, I keep going back to it because it, it's such a powerful book series and such a powerful uh, television series, although I've not watched but just one or two of the shows and, and a few segments on YouTube. But... The, the reason I think that book uh, that, that George R.R. R. Martin wrote, that whole series, <laughs> was because it just emulates what you and I go through every day, all right? I mean, seriously, it's at what you see in the news. I just, what, what happens to you at work? What, what happens to you at the women's club? <laughs> what happens at the ham radio club meetings? Uh, <laughs> what happens in your HOA, all right? Like even here where I live. You know, it's all about three things, just three things, right? Money, sex, and power. And and they could be in all kinds of different orders. So sex, power, money, power, money, sex. It doesn't matter. Just those three things. That's all it's really about. And if you fall into that, if you drink from that poison chalice of those three things, it's over. I mean, it's just over. So I try to avoid that. And so I write these columns where it's, it's you know, you think you're going to be reading about how I'm telling you how wonderful replacement windows are. <laughs> and then, you know, so the so the companies that make replacement windows are going like, oh, awesome. This is going to help us sell a lot of windows. <laughs> and then then here's what they look like at the after they read the article. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it, let me just say this. Um, I, it's going to be kind of an abbreviated live stream this morning. If you have any questions, now's the time to get them in. All right. So if you have questions, you want to you want to get them going here right, right now, and I'll help you in a way I can. And uh, I'm just kind of experimenting still with these Saturday morning live streams to see if we can get some traction. But you know, you have to understand the people on the on the left coast. Uh, I mean, it's it's still dark there. I mean, it's five in the morning. I mean, it's just starting to get light, but it's early, 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 early. All right, here's five by five. Any thoughts on geothermal for home heating and cooling? You bet. I'm in Maryland. Only option here is oil and propane for heat. So that is such a good question. It's such a remarkable question. And I've got, I'll, I'll answer right now. Then we're going to talk about it. But it's directly related to the my window replacement column. So what I want you to do is go to that link. I'll put it in again. Here's the link. Go here and read that column, but instead, but but try to imagine in your head the the uh, headline is geothermal heating. In every place in the column where I have window replacement, put geothermal heating, and um, you, you you'll get you'll see immediately see what the deal is. Uh, here, here's here's the main thrust 
of what I wrote in the column. And and this is this will answer your question five by five. The many of the salespeople who work for window replacement companies have undergone in, intensive, listen to what I'm saying now. This is really important. This is so important. You have to understand they've undergone intensive training, intensive sales training. And when they go through this training, and it can be hours and hours and hours, what they are doing, what they are indoctrinated with, all right, is the information that you could find in this book. This is a book. This I'm, What I'm going to type in that right now is it's a life-changing book that you should read it, it, it and it's, it, it changed my life completely it caused the revenue of my business to go up by 35 to 50 percent but even if you don't have a business you need to read this so that you can protect yourself in other words reading this book allows you to to suit yourself in armor like a knight you know like the an armor that wears knight and chain mail and, you know, so they don't get cut up when they get hit with a sword, right? You need to arm yourself with, with armor, invisible armor that makes you immune from the weapons. And that's what they are. They're weapons. They're weapons that the salespeople try to use on you to get the money out of your checking account, savings account, uh, or, or, or from your rug, all right? So here, good morning, Elaine. Hey, how you doing? Uh, here, you need to go get this book. If Elaine was here typing this, she could type and talk at the same time intelligently. Women, women can multitask. Men, we pretty much suck at it. There might be a few men that can do it. I just want to make sure this link's right. Uh, yes. All right. All right. So go, you need to go get that book. I'm just telling you, life-changing book. All right. Five by five. Here's the deal. In the column that I gave you the link to before about window replacement cost, there is a, a line. There's a line that I I wrote and I've, I've said it for years and years and years. And I have never been challenged on this line. And this is the core issue of your geothermal question. Okay, understand. Here's what you need to know. Over the years, I've discovered because of my, um, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of the right word, because of, um, because of my column, because of me being out there in the public, in other words, you if you went to the if you went I I say this and I, I don't take it the wrong way. If you went down to the town square and you just started to blurt out anything, most people would just ignore you. They go, "Who's that?" I mean, you're you're like you're like a nobody, all right? But no but but you might be spurting the truth. But me because I've got this column it automatically, you know, that link I just gave you about the book. Um, this this is one of the triggers, psychological weapons in the book. It's it, it, and, and just so you know, you and billions of people have been played over the past two years using this one this one psychological trigger. Just one of the many. There's, but it's called authority. In other words, because I have a syndicated column. I'm considered an authority figure. Not much different than, don't take this the wrong way, not much different than the Pope, not much different than the uh, president of France. I mean, these, you know, in other words, that, that my column puts me up on a pedestal. All right. Well, people love to knock people off pedestals. All right. So, so if, if I put something in my column that's wrong, I'm, tell, I'm here to tell you that I hear about it right away, right away. In the old days, back when I first saw my column, the internet, there was no thing. Email was not widespread. It existed, but it was not widespread. So people would write old-fashioned letters. And 
it, I've written uh, for publication 1,454 columns have been published, and I've made errors in two of them. All right. Okay. Early on, really. And so I learned right away, like, oh, man, we cannot make mistakes again. So in the first maybe 18 months, I made two mistakes. So what I'm going to tell you about geothermal heating right now is I have never been challenged on this statement. Never. Here we go. Pay attention. Are you ready? You still there? I hope you're still here, five by five. <clears throat> You never save money on a home energy investment. You never save money on improving your house for energy savings until such time as you recapture in energy savings all of the money you spent plus any interest. All right, what does that, let's unpack that really quickly. That's the same thing true about the, the replacement windows. So down the street from me, just a half mile away, uh, a, a state trooper built a new home for himself and his family. And he did a lot of the work himself because he couldn't find people to do it. Young guy, I. I have all the admiration in the world for him. He did a pretty good job, did a really good job. He put a geothermal system in his home here in New Hampshire. And the reason why, he said, was because he or his wife, one of them has to have air conditioning and he can't survive without it, which is kind of unusual because here in New Hampshire, we have really mild weather. And in the summertime, doesn't it's not like being in Houston or New Orleans, but we might get eight days a year where it's pretty hot and humid. Never mind. Back to let's see, he's been there three years. Three years ago, he spent forty eight thousand dollars to put in his geothermal system. Forty eight thousand dollars. All right, so it's a crutch word, by the way. I have a hor three horrible crutch words. So anyway, and okay. He, he here's here's what you need to know. You need to do an analysis, and it's not easy, but it can be done. What are you spending a year to heat and cool your home? right now. And I have that analysis in the column up above that I just gave you the link to. And then you need to, to look at what you're going to spend, the overage. In other words, if you're building a new home and you put in a geothermal system, let's just say for my buddy, let's just say that it was 48000 which it was, to do the geothermal, but to do a normal forced air furnace with a, um, uh, you know, with propane heat, propane fuel, and, and then, uh, you know, a, a central air outside, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's just say that that would be 28000 All right. So we got a $20,000 difference. So the question is, how long is it going to take you to recapture in energy savings that 20 that extra 20,000 that you have to spend. And if you finance it, it's going to be worse. You're going to spend more than 20 grand. Because what you may discover is that it, it like in your case it takes the same amount of electricity to operate well actually it takes more to operate the geothermal because you're operating pumps, right? But you're going to spend more money on electricity in the summertime because you live in Maryland, where you're going to use air conditioning a lot, um, than you would if you just had a regular air conditioning compressor. All right, you're going to spend more money because you've got to operate the pumps. Uh, but the, the the unit itself, understand that the the unit itself operates um, the same. It's it just that the transfer is using a liquid instead of instead of air. All right, all right, it gets really complex. But the pro the thing is, 
you need to do the analysis to find out at what point do you at least break even, at least break even. I did it for in the column for the window replacement that you might read. My, my buddy up in Chicago, I'm serious. And understand this guy up in Chicago, with all due respect, I hope he's not, well, he could be watching right now. It doesn't matter. He's got to be in his early 80s. Got to be. The payback for his windows um, in the example that I used uh, would be about um, 86 years. <laughs> but in his case, because he went with the lowest bid, his payback is probably going to be 30 years. Do you think he's going to be around in 30 years? No. So I always look at things that way. So that's the answer to your question. Um, in other words, is geothermal good? Yeah. Um, are there problems with geothermal? Mm, maybe. Um, you know, what's it cost to replace the pumps? Uh, you know, what's the cost to drill? What's the cost to get the uh, the loop in? Blah, 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 blah. So, so you, it's just all a matter of payback. All right. Let me catch up here. Here you go. You said, my thinking is my equipment is about 20, 20 years old, so to replace with geo at the end of cost of tax base for every five k more, more. That's really hard to believe. But if that, I can't even believe that you could get a, a drilling rig out to drill the wells for 5K. You better double check that price. I cannot believe. Well, but you also say after the tax breaks. Um, so, but but if, if it's true, the 5K, and if you think you're going to be in the house a while, then it may make sense to you. It, it may, you may end up saving money, all right? Or, or you, at least you'll get the payback faster. And um, it's just all a matter of doing the math. So that's all. Be as simple as that. Uh, and supposedly I would get about two cases on the energy credit. Well, be careful of that. Be careful that they really read the fine print on that language um, to make sure that they don't take that away. Uh, that that can diminish. I remember a similar situation. A friend of mine put in solar panels in Cincinnati about 15 years ago, and they offered that something that sounded like that. And they, they it's like they changed the rules halfway through the game. They got rid of it, the, the legislature or the state, and my friend's high and dry. It's like, well, wait a minute. I was counting on that money. So just read the language and make sure that that they can't pull the rug out from underneath you. Hi, Bob. Good morning. Uh, but in your case, um, five by five, it, it may make sense. I mean, you just have to run the numbers. Just have to run the numbers. And it's really hard to do the numbers, just so you know. It's extremely hard because it's a multivariable computation. And the, most people cannot do it. It's just, I don't even know that I could really do a, a true accurate one. Um, and and the other, because for example, the, the price of electricity is, we don't know what it's gonna be in the future. So what you have to really measure is the kilowatt hours. That's the best way to do your, your comparison is you wanna measure energy, the quantity of energy, not the cost of the energy. Because the quantity is 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 the constant, you know. In other words, that's when they say that one. I'll give you an example. If they say that one electric motor is ten percent more efficient than another electric motor, assuming that those two motors perform the same way through their entire life, then it's a fixed quantity. You already know that the one motor is going to save you ten percent. Uh, you know, the trouble is, is that is that if you, and I doubt this is going to happen, but I mean, here's what can happen. If you if you base your computation on cost of fuel, what happens? I mean, what happens if the cost of fuel goes down? I mean, for example, like right now, propane is really high. I've got it in my column. What happens if you base these financial uh, calculations about getting a brand new modulating boiler on the fact that propane is $4.34 a gallon, but then a year from now, it drops back down to two dollars and twenty cents when, when um, where, where it used to be. All of a sudden, you're 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 compute, you're 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 underwater. It's bad. <laughs> All right. So anyway, 
Well, five by five, that's what I just said. Exactly. The hard part for anybody is estimating costs of oil, electric, and future. Um, here's what we know. We know that the cost of electricity, at least in my opinion, is not going to come down. I don't see that happening at all. Uh, the cost for oil uh, absolutely could come way down. Uh, because just look what's happened in the past 18 months. Uh, I mean, you know, that there was, we had a past president who had a really, really fantastic quote. Uh, he said, elections have consequences. And they do. They do. So just go back in time, I don't know, three years ago, w w the United States was a net energy exporter. In other words, we were exporting energy. <laughs> Why do you think gasoline was two dollars a gallon? You know, three years ago. You know, and propane two twenty-seven a gallon. And all of a sudden, we we get a mail order president, and uh, he decide. Well, it's it's very complex, but all of a sudden, a change in policy and energy course energy costs soar. I mean, because just so you know, my college degree is in geology, and we have so much oil and natural gas here in the United States that even at current um, usage rates, we could probably, we probably have enough fossil fuels for the next two, 300 years. It, you know, but, but when all kinds of weird regulations and stop drilling here and stop doing this, but then the price goes up. Why do they do that? I, um, you know what? There's all kinds of theories, right? But anyway, just understand that the price of oil could come way down. I mean, it, it probably is going to come way down. I'm telling you right now, it's going to come. The price of oil is going to come down. There's no doubt about that. Price of electricity, probably going to just kind of just ratchet up with inflation. All right. If you have any questions about your home, happy to uh, answer them. That's why I'm here. Uh, probably only going to be on for another half hour, 45 minutes max. Uh, so you don't want to miss out on having me answer your question for free. Uh, got lots and lots to talk about. Uh, tomorrow's newsletter going to be really interesting. If, you, if you've not subscribed to my newsletter, it's free. I highly recommend you do it. Go there now. Just go to the homepage of askthebuilder.com. Right there on the front of the homepage is a little thing. Just fill it out. Your name, your email address. Make sure your email address is correct. Hit the submit button. And then in a minute, go check your email. You, you know how this works. You'll get an email from me. You got to click the link inside that email to, to actually activate your subscription. Uh, that's done on purpose so that so that I don't spam you. You know, Because imagine what would happen. Imagine if somebody came to that form and just started entering in valid email addresses, all of a sudden you'd start getting in my newsletter and go, what the hell? I didn't sign up for this damn thing. All right. So it's called a double opt-in system. I, tomorrow's newsletter, pretty amazing. It's got a really, really big part in it about uh, what happened this past week uh, in the news uh, about inflation. So really, really want to, I'm just recommending you, 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 you get my newsletter. I really try to stay tuned to all this economic news, for, not only from a personal level, but to try to help to educate you. Because a lot of people are so busy, uh, they just don't care. They don't. And I get it. You know, I, I understand. I get it. All right. So a really interesting uh, quote, uh, funny thing uh, this morning online before I started the live stream. Um, I think there's this one... Uh, <laughs> This one veterinarian somewhere in the United States, um, he's got one of those signs out front that, you know, you can change the message on. And the message was, dogs have owners, cats have slaves. <laughs> if, if you've ever had both, you know it to be true. <laughs> so um, that was, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, all right, if you have, uh, and then I'll tell you this. Um, Bef you know, I'm waiting for you to type a question, just so you know. In other words, I'm now I'm just babbling, uh, babbling about nonsense. The only reason I do the, the only reason I invest time in doing these, trust me, there are a hundred other things I could be doing right now, a hundred. But instead, I'm here talking to you, 
and and trying to help save you money and time. So the only way that works is you have to type a question in. Simple as that. The uh, And until such time as you type a question, I'm just going to babble on. And if I don't get any questions, I'm going to hit the end stream button. There's a right, right down here. I mean, I'm pointing. Here's my finger, but it's down here. I have an end stream button. I just click it. I'm out of here. I'm gone. So type in your question about your home. I don't care what it is. Uh, or you can type in your own little story about how you save money. It really doesn't matter. Hey, Ray, Sydney, Australia. What do you know? Man, great that you're here. Wow, that's thanks for checking in. See, that's why I like people to check in. I just, I find it remarkable that you're in Australia. Um, so tell me, um, you're kind of leading up to summer there. It's fall in Australia. Uh, how are things down there, Ray? How... Um, is everything still upside down down there? I mean, literally, is everything still upside down down under? Um, how, how's it going down there? What um, any news about um, how how you're being treated down there? I'd love to know. Uh, all right. So what happened here on Thursday? So Thursday morning, you know, I, I'm up early. I uh, my wife and I are on different schedules. I, I we're on three hours apart, and so I'm a morning person. She's not. And I, you know, I come up here, it was, maybe it was dawn. And, and anyway, I, I come up to the man cave. All right. Well, I'm drinking coffee. Well, I, at some point I have to take a nature break where there's no bathroom up here. I go downstairs and I have to walk past the front door. And I don't know why I don't always look out the front door. It's got a leaded glass panel, but I, I just kind of look, kind of glance and I go, what the heck? <laughs> And right on our front porch is a moose that's sleeping. <laughs> I'm serious, flipping moose. So, and it wasn't a full size one. It was not a. It was not a. A. a, a um, what's that? How come I can't think of the name? Uh, isn't that well? They call the females cows. Oh, a bull. It was not a bull, nor was it a cow. Well, it was a yearling, so it was one of them, but it was small. Still weighed probably three to four hundred pounds, but the poor thing, um, the poor thing was uh, literally being eaten alive by by winter ticks, and uh, it was really weak. And um, I ended up I called the fish and game people. Uh, we have a really vibrant uh, fish and game division here, you know, government officials, and it just so happens at the closest fish and game office, the Moose project leader, that's where he works at. And I got him on the phone. He said, I'll, I'll be right there. And because uh, he's studying him. And anyway, he, uh, they came, three people came because here's what they thought. They thought that they were, they didn't say this on the phone, but they thought they were going to have to kill it. And then they needed three people to get it up in the truck, you know. And, but they didn't, they did not euthanize it. Uh, the thing got up and walked away, but it was just, it had these, horrible winter tick infestation. And my God, I got photographs of all this. And these the ticks were falling off the, uh, in gorge, just in gorge with blood from this moose. I mean, they were the size of, uh, I don't know, like small acorn, like a small acorn, huge, very, very unbelievable. All right, let's see. Um, let's get caught up. Finally, we got some questions. Because I was going to, I was just about ready to hit the end stream button, seriously. I got stuff to do. I got so much to do. Uh, how much? So Donald wants to know how much do he says? How much do you normally charge replacement? Window? I don't charge anything because I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I, I know that's a smart ass comment. Um, my so in my column, if you went up here, uh, if you go read this column, uh, and you can find out what it costs. But but it doesn't tell you the cost of the installation. Uh, but my buddy in Chicago got bids, Don. He has 10 windows to replace. He got bids from between $10,100 to $30,000 something. So the total cost window plus installation between $1,000 and $3,000 a window. Insanity. You go to, if you go to, the big box stores and type in replacement windows. You can you can actually go buy pre-made replacement windows. You know the chances of them fitting are one in a million. But 
you can buy right now piece of crap windows. I'm serious. They're just pieces of crap for 160 bucks, maybe $200 um, at some of the big box stores. Uh, you know, there's a huge difference in qual huge range in quality and replacement windows. But I, I would I would guess the average. Um, I mean, in all the years I did it, it could take it, it would take a, a seasoned installer. And there's a, so many variables, but it would take a seasoned installer, maybe on average. Two hours to maybe three to 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 take out an old window and put in a new window. So let's just say two hours. And right now they're probably charging those people out at $70 an hour, maybe $80 an hour. So let's just say $200. Let's just say $200, uh, the cost, the hard cost, the hard cost to replace a window. But it's but if it was just one window, like if you were having one window, it's going to be much higher. Because in other words, for me to, I'm not going to come out to your house and, and, for, and put in one window for 200 bucks, not doing it. I want to be there all day. I want to be there for three or four days, whatever. So if you said, well, I just want one window put in, I might go, I don't know, it's going to be $900, all right? You know, because I, you, you know, it, you, I think you understand why. Um, RMC, buying a 100-year-old house with original windows. One has a broken pane of glass, medium-sized dining room. Uh, RMC, I can't tell you. I mean, that, that'd be like saying... Um, Let's imagine you were an auto mechanic, and I said to you, um, the other day I was driving and my car started to make this crazy noise. How much is it going to cost to fix it? <laughs> the auto mechanic goes, I don't know. I haven't figured out what's wrong yet. <laughs> so in your case, um, one broken pane of glass, how hard and expensive will it be? Well, I don't know what type of window it is. I don't know if it's a replacement, uh, uh, insulated glass. I don't know if it's single glazed glass. Um, I don't know how it was glazed. I mean, there's a million questions I've got. Uh, so, the, but the answer, here's the answer to your question. Wherever you live, there's a really good chance that you have, have businesses that just do glass replacement. You, you know, they, for, 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 here, for example, here at where I live in New Hampshire, we have a very big company uh, it's called Granite State Glass, and it's a massive company. They do they they would come out and replace that window for you or that pane of glass. Uh, they would also put glass in a brand new skyscraper down in Manchester. So so it's a huge company. So just you're just gonna have to get bids. All I can tell you, I, I don't I can't give you a price. I, I I'll tell you what I will give you a price. It's gonna cost you four hundred twenty two dollars and eighteen cents. Is the price accurate? I don't know. I don't know, but I'll give you a price. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a smart ass. I'm just trying to, to share with you. If you want to get accurate, if you want to get, uh, it's like a computer. If you put garbage in, you get garbage out. If you want me to, to give you a price, you have to give me all of these specifications and all of this data so I can calculate the correct price. Bob, what is the proper way to set the flush chain float to allow more water into the bowl? I seem to only get half a tank of water flowing from the tank. So, well, you have to adjust the chain so that the flapper valve stay. First of all, you have to make it so that when you push down the flush handle properly, that the flapper valve comes up to almost a pure vertical position. And then there's the two squirrels plan. <laughs> I wrote about that in my newsletter. Um, I'll tell you that in a minute. So the, the flapper valve comes up. And stays in the vertical position for about two seconds, maybe three, and then it falls back down like a drawbridge. So um, that that's what it's supposed to do. Your and understand flapper valves wear out, so so you may have to put a new flapper valve in. And they're they're very easy. They have a kit. Fluid Master has a kit that makes it really simple. Fluid Master, in my opinion, makes the best ones. Uh, RMC told me single glaze. Well, RMC, if that's the case, if it's just single glaze glass, this is a DIY job. This You don't have to call on a company. It's very simple to do, unless the pane of glass is huge, all right? And even then, you just may need a little help. There's plenty of great videos on YouTube that show you how to replace a piece of glass. Or 
I offer a transcribed video service. In other words, if you want, if you want me to help you do this, um, here is, um, oh, I should have copied this one link. Um, I'm going to put this in here, then I'm going to go backwards. Um, you, uh, if you need help, if you need phone coaching, I do phone coaching uh, over the phone. Just yesterday, I uh, was on a phone call with Mark out in Utah. But go there if you if you want me to help you over the phone, do this window. And there's a really good chance I probably would save you three, four, five hundred bucks. All right. Now, if I have helped you here during this live stream, um, I should put this in more often. Um, I, I I don't know. I just just feels kind of odd doing it. But um, if if something I shared with you today helped you save money then you can buy me an ice cream cone. Maybe you can buy me two ice cream cones. All right? Pretty simple to do. Here's how you can buy me an ice cream cone. Mocha chip, by the way. <coughs> Excuse me. So if, if, if you discover something on this live stream that helps you, maybe you can return the favor. All right, here we go. Let's get caught up. Um, Elaine wants to know, how do I fill a groundhog hole next to a sewer pipe? Neighbor said fist size rocks. Is this correct? Um, yeah, you could put you should put rocks in, but understand the Elaine, understand these groundhogs, they're they're um they're <laughs> they're probably just gonna dig a hole right next to where the rocks are. I mean, they are they're really industrious. I mean, they're really and, and chipmunks are the same way. <laughs> I um Last year, I did an experiment. We have these chipmunks around the house. They're just prolific here where I live in New Hampshire. And they, they they burrow into the ground and they have these little dens in the ground. And I decided that I was going to start putting small rocks in the holes. The holes are about this big, you know, in the, in the ground. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to stuff some flipping rocks in the hole. And uh, I come back the next day and the rocks are out of the hole. <laughs> it's... I, I kind of got the feeling that I was, it was a real live version of Caddyshack. <laughs> when, when Bill Murray was in, in the battle with the, the groundhog on the golf course. I, it, you just have to understand these animals. They're, they're tough hombres, man. They're, you know, they're tough, tough. They'll, they're like, what? Rocks? Are you kidding me? What the hell? They'll just... <laughs> if... I hate to say this, and I don't, you know, I, the PETA people, you know, the people who eat tasty animals, uh, is that right, right? Is that the, that's the acronym, right? PETA, <laughs> people eating tasty animals. I think that's the name of their organization. Anyway, they're going to get, <laughs> there's the crutch word. If they watch, hear me say this, they, they'll be really angry. But if you want to stop holes, <laughs> you you have to get rid of the thing that's digging the holes. It's that simple. That's, that's what you got to do. <laughs> Excuse me, people eating tasty animals. I'll never forget when I heard that. <laughs> All right, reality. Reality intrudes. Any way to estimate what the annual cost of heating loss would be? Heating loss would be putting in a good new construction window versus a good wall. Uh, yeah, there is a way to do it. It's really simple. You, uh, you, go, to, you go to the um, Air Conditioning Contractors Association, the ACCA, and you read and use Manual J. So it's called Manual J, just like in um, uh, Men in Black. Remember, wasn't that was, yeah, it was, that was Will Smith's new name was J. <laughs> so get Manual J and do the calculation. Simple, really easy. Well, actually it's not easy, but it is. But you're going to decide, you're going to find out um, that, the heat loss and BTUs per hour are, I'm just going to estimate for a window versus a solid wall. I'm just going to estimate maybe um, 80. I don't know. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to, it'd really be interesting to run the calculation, but I'm just going to say average size window, 80 BTUs per hour. That'd be my guess. Ground, Elaine says the groundhog's been relocated. Well, 
just temporarily. <laughs> and and you already know, Elaine, what's going to happen. So if it's true, like if you relocated that groundhog and and uh, it can't come back, some the other nearby groundhog is going to go, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Nobody's here. <laughs> so they're going to move into that territory. I mean, come on. People know that. A animals are very territorial, most of them. And I mean, I'm not a biologist, but this is this is what happens when you get enough of this stuff. You figure this out. They somebody else will move in, man. They'll move in like, hey, nobody's here. Shit. Let's go dig some holes. <laughs> All right. One more question. We have a toilet that everyone uses due to location at home. The handle is always coming loose. How do I keep it tight? Um <laughs> All right. Uh, probably maybe um, put a lock washer on it, maybe. Um, you know, open, take the tank lid off, take it apart, maybe put a lock washer on that. I, I have a, that, that's what I would start with. You know, you can also put on, uh, auto mechanics know this. There are compounds that you can, and they come in different strengths. Um, they're, they're, they're for bolts that, that you can put uh, this. It looks like toothpaste. All right. It's the same consistency as toothpaste. And you put it on the threads of a bolt and it prevents the bolt from backing out like a thread locking compound. All right. So I think that's what they're called. That's the actual name. You can do the same thing. You can take the that nut off and uh, uh, clean everything with a Q-tip, clean it all up, make sure it's dry, blah, 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 blah. Put some of that goop, a little bit of goop on those threads, put the, the nut back on, tighten it, and it will it should glue the nut back on. Okay, so you might not be using, if you're using that currently, you might not be using a strong enough one, all right? That's the, you know, but, you, but I'd also try a lock washer. Um, so a lock washer and maybe the blue compound. All right, simple as that. And the, <laughs> you say there were actually three really three groundhogs relocated and no more have been seen. Exactly. Not for a while. Not it's not there. I agree. You'll be groundhog free for a little bit. <laughs> They're gonna be back. Well, if not them, some other ones. Nothing about this is hard. <laughs> By the way, I wish I could share photos here. I know Will's not here. Will's Will's golfing now. Uh, <laughs> I got some Will, who is one of the moderators here. This is pretty cool. Uh, so Lorene's not here. A lot of the regulars are not here. And uh, Lorene has been with me for months. And Lorene uh, has been pounding on me. That she wants Ask the Builder merchandise. <laughs> you know, like Ask the Builder t-shirts and things. One of my favorite sayings is nothing about this is hard. <laughs> so Will, I joined a golf league. At, at Will, Will, Will suggested that I go, join a golf league to improve my game. Our first game is this coming Thursday. And our first match. And he said, you, you, need, to, you need to get some special golf balls, some logo golf balls, and put that saying on it and put your Ask the Builder logo. And I I thought, he said, because it's perfect. He, he said, can you imagine when someone finds your logo golf ball <laughs> and reads the saying on it, nothing about this is hard, how much they're going to laugh because they're going to go, well, it's hard enough that you couldn't keep this ball in your bag and it's out in the woods. <laughs> So I ordered, I ordered uh, two dozen and um, so I'm going to offer them for sale. Like if you, I mean, even if you're not a golfer, it might be fun to have one of these things, you know, on your desk. I, I don't know. I, so they're really cool because the, uh, I, my Ask the Builder logo is linear and, and the logo has to be a square, the image. And so I happen to have this cartoon image of my head that a professional cartoon people created about 24 years ago. And um, anyway, it's in my newsletter. 
And if you get the newsletter tomorrow, you'll see it. And and I also, if you, you know, in the newsletter, I, I I shared an actual image of what the golf balls are going to look like. So that that's pretty fun. So we're going to have some. So it's very odd that that's the first piece of merchandise. But I'm also going to have T-shirts and a hats and stuff like that soon. All right. Anyway. <clears throat> um. So yeah, the compound's going to work on the plastic. Like I said, you should just try a lock washer too. If you have any questions about your home, no matter what they are, Elaine had some great ones, and so, as did everyone. Uh, five by five, RMC. So RMC, if you're still here, that you, you're going to save hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You, if it's single glazed glass, you're going to be able to do it yourself. Understand, if you've not ever done glass replacement before, uh, glass comes two strengths. Typical glass comes single and double strength. If it's if it's a bigger pane of glass, and what I mean by bigger pane of glass, anything. If it was uh, anything over, um, I don't know, more than one and a half square feet or even two square feet, I, I would be using double strength glass. And if you're, you'll find that you need what's called push points. Uh, you need to, um, um, you need to make sure that when you take the old glass out, you remove all the putty. You need to. Um, um, clean the wood surface really well. If it is wood, I assume it is. It's a hundred year old house. Uh, so you, you need to get the wood dust free. And what I would do, um, because this will mean that you'll have to replace the glass. Um, you might have to put a piece of cardboard in, but once you had all the putty out of where the window's got to go and, and you have it clean, I would actually take a primer, a, a paint, a really, really high quality primer and I would prime that wood because typically it's bare. All right. So it's got to be really clean, no dust, prime it. And typically the primers will dry within an hour. And once the primer is tacky, uh, it might even not be totally dry, like 45 minutes into the job, then you, you want to get fresh glazing compound and uh, start to glaze the wood. If you've never done it before, watch a few videos. And what will happen is that primer. First of all, it's going to help prevent the window from rotting in the future. But secondly, the putty is really going to stick well. And, and that's what you want. It's really going to seal well. So that's a little trick. If you have any questions about your home, uh, just enter them right now. Um, otherwise, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to just end the stream. Uh, I'll get, I, I, sometimes the stream can be, uh, the, the, there's a latency in the comments. And uh, so you might be typing right now. and and, and I, I bail too quickly. But if you have a question about your home, now's the time to put it in. Happy to help you. Or a story. I really don't care. I don't care what it is. Just go ahead. If you have a window replacement question, window repair question, uh, brand new windows, uh, window flashing, I don't care what it is. Uh, it, and it could be any question about your home. It could be a plumbing question, uh, asphalt sealer, blacktop sealers, um, Blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, Elaine, this on a side note, this is a sidebar. It won't make sense to anybody else. I finally got the report from the North Carolina. I got it yesterday, the North Carolina fire marshal about that explosion. But it was really, it was a really horrible report. It was, it wasn't what I was looking for. So now I have to go see if the sheriff has got what I want. But um, I think there's a big cover up going on. But anyway. Um, but I finally did get, so your advice worked. It just took the woman six, seven weeks to get it to me. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> what a crutch word. It's such a bad crutch word. Crutch words are horrible. If, if, what, if you like what you hear, make sure you click the, uh, the thumbs up button. It really helps those votes help, uh, this stream, you know, rank and, and it just helps a lot. If you've not signed up for my newsletter, I know Elaine has, I know others have, you should probably do so. Tomorrow's newsletter is going to be pretty important. It's a really, it's kind of a long one, a uh, couple of neat stories. And I'm trying something a little different, trying to gauge the reaction. We'll see if, how the reaction is. But um, I always like to test things in the newsletter and then get feedback. Uh, here's some upcoming things that are coming up. Uh, I put out a request over the past week to different manufacturers, tool manufacturers. And, uh, and as crazy as this sounds, uh, 
I asked what I asked for was I can you send me a a circular saw, a specific one, but that it has a cord on it, you know, the old fashioned with an electric cord. And so I've got several saws coming on my way to test. And uh, I um I'm gonna I'm actually gonna do a video about the two saws. I've decided to do a video because I don't think this video is out there about how to use saws. You need to understand that saws, that's th really interesting. You may not know this as a consumer, but circular saws are made in mirror images of one another. And, and, and so if you're right-handed, it really doesn't make any difference which way you cut, if you're left-handed or right-handed, it makes a difference which side of the board you stand on when you go to cut it. So imagine if you put like a two by four, or like a long two by four on two saw horses and you needed to cut off just like six inches. Depending on the saw that you're using, you have to stand on one side or the other of the two by four. All right. So really interesting, really. A lot of people don't know this. And um, I'm going to re record a video about that once I get these saws. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Elaine wants to know about the HOA fiasco. Did you get it resolved? Well, the question should be, you know, that Elaine, the power is always in the question. What you probably should have asked was, was it resolved to my satisfaction? <laughs> the answer is no. Here's what Elaine is talking about really quickly. I shared this in a newsletter maybe two, three months ago. Uh, I live in an HOA. I never, in, I knew it was an HOA when I moved in. I never intended to live here this long. It's a, a, some things happened. The economic snow globe got shook up. You know what a snow globe is, right? You sh you've got one of those things that sits on your mantle and then you shake it and all these snowflakes fall, you know, in the, in the, in, around Christmas inside the snow globe. Well, when you shake a snow globe financially, bad things can happen. I mean, it's just like everything gets jumbled. And that happened to me in 2000, it happened to everybody in 2008. You may not remember it. What happened in September of 2008? Lehman Brothers collapse. And if you know anything about how the banking system works, that's bad juju. All right. Bad, bad, bad juju, Macumbo. And then in 2011, I lost 95% of my revenue overnight because of a major algorithm update on, on Google. Anyway. Uh, what was I talking about? The um, I just completely lost my train of thought. Jeez, old Pete. Oh, HOA. And so what happened was I was only going to be in this house for two years and then build a new one. Well, the new house never happened because of those two things. The HOA here. So, so here's here's what's happened. In, in the last 10 years, there's been this big growth. There were major websites that that just kind of popped up uh, be, because the internet made it easy. Uh, Airbnb, uh, Verbo, uh, Booking.com, and people start renting their houses out. Well, there's always, you know, there's always a bad apple in, 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 in the barrel, right? Or in the bag. But but what, what happens is, is that there have been communities that have started to say to private property owners, and I'm a private property owner. In other words, I actually own my piece of land. It's not that I have a zero lot line development because I understand there's all kinds of different um, developments. In other words, there are people that literally only own the piece of land that the foundation of the house sits on. As soon as you step out the door, you're not on private property. Well, in my case, I'm on private property. I own like three acres. In an effort to try to bring peace and harmony to a community, the communities are passing laws saying, nope, no short-term rentals allowed. Sorry, can't do it. So they're basically forcing down your throat, telling you how you can use your personal property. And, you know, all in an effort to, to try to bring peace and harmony. I mean, that's their motivation. Well, they say that's their motivation. See, that's where it gets real fuzzy. Because there, there are a group of people in, in every land 
every country in the world. I've talked about this multiple times. It's all Game of Thrones stuff, all right? Remember what I said 40 minutes ago, sex, power, money. Money, power, sex. Power, sex, money. All right, those three things. That's what rules just about everything, all right? In different orders, all right? And so, but, but there's a group of people here in America that are all about power and they want to tell you how to live your life. All right. I'm going off the rails a little bit, but it's a fact that, that none of this is true. None of this is made up, especially if you watch what happened in the past week. <laughs> they ba basically now they're saying the First Amendment doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> doesn't. No, that was just a recommendation. <laughs> Are my my HOA decided that they were going to pass a, a, a they, they floated the blue. Well, what, hey, let me give you the backstory. So over the past two or three years, there, some renters have come to, to our association and they behave badly down at the beach. I asked, well, how many incidents did we have? And they wouldn't answer me. Oh, that's interesting. Why, why do you not want to tell me how many incidents there were? I mean, if there were 30 incidents, let me know. Sounds like there was only one or two. Yet over the years here in my community, there might have been 100 or 200 people who have rented. In fact, I know this to be the case because just one, because the third house north of me, the third house north of my home, the person who owns it, to my understanding, has never lived there. He bought the house 15 years ago as an investment just to rent it out. So he has had many, many, many people rent the home. No problems. The HOA floats this balloon. Uh, some people complain, and 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 they and and, and other and, and then the board starts to do propaganda about how um, oh it's going to protect you know it's going to create peace and harmony. Uh, you know, protect your property value, blah, 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 all this bull crap. And I I raised my hand and I sent out an email to everybody back in the winter. And I go, wait a minute. Have you ever watched the movie Christmas Vacation? You know, probably a 35-year-old movie with Chevy Chase in it. Hilarious movie, you know, where, you know, it's all about Christmas. And and who, who drops in? <laughs> an uninvited guest is Cousin Eddie, right? Remember Cousin Eddie in that beat-up RV? And the one morning he's out there pumping all the sewage and putting the sewage in the storm sewer. I mean, you know, so, you know, so cousin Eddie is, you know, Randy Quaid is, I think, yeah, I think it was Randy Quaid. Um, it was the actor portrayed as this idiot, you know, idiot, asshole, like your worst nightmare for a neighbor. So I said in my email, <laughs> oh, and by the way, by the way, there was going to be a five thousand dollar fine a week. Five thousand dollars a week fine if you violate this bylaw. I go when when we have a bad neighbor move in. Move in. I mean, when we have a bad person like cousin Eddie buy in our HOA, and they come down to the beach every day with their tribe, and they create mayhem at the beach. I mean, seriously, are you going to find them five thousand dollars a day? No answer. To make a long story short, the stupid bylaw passes, and we have sixty in our in our bylaws. It says to make to to, to create a new amendment, you have to have a two thirds vote. Two thirds have to approve it. So that means forty people have to vote yes. Forty one people voted yes. So nineteen of us said no, because here's how stupid it is. Here's why these laws are bad. What happens if I want to rent my home to a group of, I don't know, people who can't swim? I mean, people can't swim. They're disabled. They're in wheelchairs. But they just want to come to my house. Like there's a big national organization and they let 15 kids come to my house in, in wheelchairs, which is fine. And they just want to roll the wheelchairs out onto the deck and they just want the kids to be out on the deck to enjoy the lake by just looking at it. What's wrong with that? Are they going to go down and cause problems at the beach? No. What happens if I want to rent my home to every week to eight, because I have a four bedroom home, to a group of eight senior citizens 
that all they want to do is play bridge out on my deck, on, you know, underneath the umbrella all day long. They just want to drink umbrella drinks, play bridge, not going to bother anybody, not going to play loud music. They just want to be on my deck. So now I can't do that. See how bad these laws are? They're telling you what you can do with your flipping private property. Bad. Everything about it is bad. So that's what happened. Hi, Jimmy. No worries. Um, no worries. If you have any other questions about your home, now's the time to put it in. Otherwise, I am out of here. Uh, I, you know, I only, I, I've said this a thousand times. I only do the live streams to try to save you time and money. I don't, I don't do it to, to, to see myself on this flipping. I'm looking right at myself. Well, I'm looking at the camera up there, but I know that if I look down at myself, then I, I, I don't look at you anymore. I don't do the live streams just to babble on. That's not why I do it. So you have to ask questions <laughs> or you can share your own little story. But unfortunately, YouTube only gives you 200 characters. So good luck with that. Uh, the Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to share before I get out of here. Um, well, today I'm going to go, I'm going to leave here shortly uh, to go south about an hour. Uh, there's a ham radio, I don't know what you call it. It's not a convention. It's a, a fest, I guess. It, 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 they have it twice a year. And it's at the Deerfield Fairgrounds. And I actually messaged a friend of mine this morning and shared how up here in the Northeast, I mean, this was not the case back where I came from. I grew up in Ohio and we had, we had a county fair every summer. Uh, but the trouble with our county fair where I lived is that the, the, there was so little agricultural ground left. I mean, the, the fair just, just was cratering. Just, I mean, there were hardly any farms left, you know, because all the land had been developed. Up here in the Northeast, the, these county fairs, they are, they're like the Super Bowl. I'm, that's about the best way to describe it, in all honesty. I'm going to, the, you, you need to look this up. Go onto Google Maps right now. I know it sounds crazy. Go to Google Maps and type in Deerfield, New Hampshire Fairgrounds. Type that into Google Maps. Look at how big the parking lot is. I don't know how many car they they might be able to fit five or ten thousand cars in this parking lot. It's the biggest parking lot I've ever seen in my life. It's enormous, <laughs> and all of these flipping buildings and it, it's an enormous, huge place. And so they have the county fair there at the end of each in the fall. We have these big like like one another big fair here in New Hampshire is the sandwich fair. If you go online and look up Sandwich Fair, and I've gone to them a couple times. They're fascinating. They have these tractor pull contests. They have all these livestock on display. It's really pretty cool. I mean, you know, you can buy um, waffle cones and and uh, funnel cakes and every, every food you could ever imagine. Uh, it's just a fun, fun atmosphere. But this one's for ham radio guys. So it's a bunch of old farts walking around. Uh, it's And I think it's going to be horrible. I'm only going there to meet a friend of mine. We have a meeting. Uh, about the New England forest rally. And um, and anyway, so that's where I'm going here. I'm going to be going down there. So it's a nice day. It's going to be a little cool. Uh, finally, the sun came out. The sun's out here really well. Uh, the winds died down. It's a little breezy. I can see the trees moving. And um, 55 today. But in the sun, if you stand in the sun, it's going to be warm. Uh, what else did I want to share? One other little thing. Um, I have, I'm really blessed because when I look out my window, I'm looking out the window right now and I just look into the woods and I've got a hillside here that goes up to my leach field. And I, there, just to, to, to Elaine's thing about the groundhog. So here's what, here's what I know. And that we have a lot of gray squirrels around here, but they're territorial. And right in this area that I'm looking out on, there are two squirrels that I don't know if they're brother and sister I don't know if they're just best friends. I, I don't know what the deal is, but I have never really seen this in the past. These two squirrels 
in the morning. They only do it in the morning. Um, they play with each other. I mean, I'm serious. It's play. And they chase one another. They, ch they, they, they'll tumble. Like, just like, have you ever seen kittens or cats like sham fight? They're not really, it's not a true cat fight. They're just like, you know, they're just tussling with one another. And they chase each other up and down the trees. They chase each other around the lawn. It's the funniest thing in the world. They're have you can just tell they're having an amazing time and uh having a lot of fun. Then the other day, earlier this week, I saw something for the first time. One of them, I, I don't know, the other one must have been off playing or sick or who knows what, but one of the two squirrels was just playing by itself. And I have a lot of moss that grows here. It had somehow balled up a, a, a bunch of moss in the size of a, like a tennis ball. That's about the best size. And it is push, it's it's playing with this ball of moss like a cat, like a, a juvenile cat plays with one of those toys. Like if you buy it like a catnip toy or a little toy mouse and it throws it up in the air and goes and chases it. Um, th this squirrel was doing that out on this hill. It would carry it up. It would roll down. It would chase after it. It would attack it. Craziest thing I've ever seen. Cra I'm just telling you, so amazing to see that you just wouldn't think that these animals um, would play, but that's really what it is. They were just playing, having a good time. <clears throat> oh, hello, Louise. How much is the window replacement cost? Well, good question. So here's what you need to, re Louise, you need to go, um, you need to go read this new column I've got. Brand new column I just wrote. Everything you need to know is right there. Um, everything you need to know. Uh, so just go there so I don't have to repeat it. So Louise, just go to that link that I just put in the chat and um, have at it, buddy. <laughs> the price, the, the bottom line is the price is all over the map, but here's the best part. For 95% of the people out there, I didn't say this earlier, but I'll say it now. For 95% of the people out there who are thinking about getting replacement windows, not, think of this, 95%. You don't have to get replacement windows. All those wonderful things that the salesman is telling you about with your the new windows you're going to get, guess what? You can make your existing windows do the same thing. <laughs> what if I told you that you could go out and buy a paint if you've got wood windows or metal windows, I don't care, on the outside of your home and and you're you're unhappy with the because the paint falls off every 5 years. What if I told you you could paint them with a paint that'll last 20 years? All right? What if I told you all of those energy savings, like, oh, your new windows are going to have all this crazy energy saving glass, blah, 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 blah. It's going to block infrared. It's going to block UV. It's going to save your fabric, save your, save your wife, save your children, <laughs> save your upholstered fabrics. Well, what if I told you you could go out and buy really inexpensive window films made by very high quality companies that will do the same thing and you can put the window films on yourself? <laughs> All right. In other words, instead of buying a $2,000 window, what if I told you that for $80, you could completely redo your window and uh, get the same performance? All right. <laughs> yes. That's a great question, early winter. Can you fix foggy window? Yes. The glass, almost every single window, there's a few exceptions like Anderson windows. Uh, I have Anderson windows in my own home. And if I break one of my windows, what happens is you basically have to buy the sash. You have to buy the sash and the window because the way that they they encapsulate the window in vinyl, you can't reglaze it. Many windows can be reglazed. All right. All you have to do is take a photo, take some photographs of the outside of your window, go to a local glass company, and show your photographs to the people, and they'll say yes, we can we can replace that that we can replace the glass. So the answer is very, the answer is yes. Elaine, storm windows is what we put over a 90 year old, blah, 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 blah. Well, all that the storm windows did, Elaine, is try to maybe block the air infiltration a little bit. That's, that's all they did. Uh, so, and I say that depending on the type of glass. And the years ago, when I used to put in storm windows, the storm windows were just regular glass. And they, they, there was nothing fancy about the storm windows. They just were regular glass. And 
if you caulked really well, you got an extra R value of one, big deal. Glass has an R factor of one, written normal, a normal piece of glass. Uh, so it, it, a lot of what your experience, Len, may have been uh, perception, not, not reality, all right? Five for fun. Is it possibly place a Larson storm door window, which is a hidden roll up? I don't know. Maybe you. So that's a great, that's a great question, by the way. Excuse me. That is such a great question. I get about 10 of them a week. And here's my advice to you. When you have a question about a product like that, the last person to trust is me. I, I know that may come, you may feel like, what? What are you saying, Tim? I thought you were the expert. And I've said this, and I say it in the newsletter tomorrow. Stop trusting people. I'm talking about everyone. Stop trusting people you see on television. Stop it. Stop it right now. Because you've been played the last two years. All right? Stop it. The only person who's got the correct answer to your question, five for fun, there's only one place that's got the correct answer that I would trust. It would be Larson. Just pick up the phone on Monday and call Larson up or go to their website. But I often say go to their website, use their contact form. But I found I, I test companies all the time on this. I test companies. I, I do it on purpose. I go to a, a, I'll go to Pella Windows or I'll go to a big manufacturer. They've got to contact us. Fill out this form. We'll get back with you. I do it all the time. I never hear back from them. And I specifically say in the in the thing where you write or type, I go, please, please call me on the phone. Here's my phone number. Because sometimes email gets lost in the spam folder, blah, blah, blah. All right. So, so if you fill out a contact form, don't, don't count on the fact they're going to get back with you. So call them up yourself. Be proactive. Go to Larson. Find out what Larson says about replacing the glass. Don't trust anybody else. Stop trusting people. Stop, stop trusting people on television. Please stop it. Please, please, please. You've, you've been played. You've been so played the last two years. It's horrible. Horrible. All right. Um, I'm out of here. I, I'm going to go. I got to go. Going to get out of here and uh, go have some breakfast. I haven't had any breakfast yet. I'm trying to do these fasts from now on. I try to fast for 15, 16 hours before I, I eat again. Uh, it's a, probably a good idea. I'm trying to drop about 20 pounds. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, Elaine, you have a good day too. Uh, good luck. Hope those groundhogs don't show back up. <laughs> they will. Just a matter of time. <laughs> They're going to come back. Uh, and if once again, if you've not subscribed to my newsletter, go to the askthebuilder.com website right on the homepage. Subscribe to the newsletter. Elaine will tell you. Elaine, if you're still here, tell people about my newsletter. Is it any good? Do you like my newsletter? Let people know. Let people know if the newsletter is any good, if you're still here. I hope you're still here. Um, just just um, uh, what I try to do is I try to share some fun stories about it's kind of a quirky newsletter. Um, uh, you know, it's not this where I'm lecturing to you. It's like we're having a discussion and I try to, uh, I, I try to share, um, stories. Uh, here we go. <laughs> she said, it's a great newsletter. I tell her, thank you very much for that. Uh, I try to share stories because people love stories. All right. People hate to be lectured to. No one likes to be lectured to. No one does. That's why when you go to a party, if you arrive late at a party, what do you always see? At every single party, there's always somewhere at the party as a person where five or six or seven people are gathered around him or her, him or her, and the five or six people gathered around him are just listening. What's that person doing? The, the person's almost always telling a story. He's not trying to sell them life insurance, right? So simple as that. No, I'll end with this. Nothing about this is hard. <laughs> Nothing about this is hard. Wait till you see the golf balls that have that on it. <laughs> it's going to be great. Oh, uh, uh, Elaine. So I got in this rut this this week, one morning, uh, and it was really fun. Uh, I got into this rut of listening and going back and watching 
a bunch of um, online, a bunch of the segments from Miami Vice television series. And so Sonny Crockett, and my alter ego, are you kidding me? I wish I could be as cool as Sonny. So I, I actually texted a friend of mine saying, um, I'm thinking about doing a wardrobe change this year, you know, getting rid of the flannel and, and just going pastels, <laughs> you know, white blazer, white linen, you know, blazer, uh, very thin, uh, at, at, you know, nice pastel, um, like Henley t-shirts underneath. <laughs> I don't know if I could pull off that look. I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about it though. So go, go onto YouTube and watch, um, some of the, uh, some of the Miami Vice stuff. What a great television series. Oh my gosh. It's got, I've got to, I mean, the music, I mean, that was one of the things that was so great about Miami Vice is that the producer understood using popular music, you know, and getting the rights to it within each episode. It was brilliant. Brilliant. Oh my gosh. Uh, like the, especially the one, the one episode when they did Into the Night. And of course, Glenn Fry did, I don't know if you know this. So Glenn Fry, that one of the founders of the Eagles, he was in a couple of the episodes. Um, like his Smuggler's Blues song, I believe he wrote for Miami Vice. So very just great, great music. Great. So I ended up watching all these episodes and seeing Sonny Crockett, you know, which the actor was Don Johnson, um, you know, in those classic, his classic uniform was that white blazer, these loose white linen pants, because it's so hot and humid in Miami, and those pastel, um, like Henley type t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I think I may try it. <laughs> we'll see if I can pull it off. History. I don't know if there's any history in this week's Sunday's newsletter, um, th but there's a lot of economics in it. It's tomorrow's newsletter. I guarantee you, Elaine, here's what's going to happen. Next Sunday, you're going to see some brick bat in, in my next Sunday newsletter where I'm going to get scolded by some people uh, who are subscribers. And I say, just they're, here's what they're going to say. They're going to say, stop trying to be an, an economist. That's, just quit it. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Go, go, just stick with home improvement. I guarantee you I'm going to get emails like that. <laughs> I, I, I have to admit, I, I'm just going to say this. <laughs> there's, only, there's nine people here. Some days, maybe you're the same way. Maybe you're the same way. Maybe, maybe you're the same way. Some days you're on the muscle, all right? You're on the muscle and you, you have a stick in your hand. And you like to, you know, like maybe a seven foot long stick and you like to put the stick through the flipping bars and poke the bear, like the bears in the cage. And you go, you know what, bear, take this, boom. And you poke the flipping bear. <laughs> so, there are days when I feel that way when I write my newsletter and I actually do it knowing, knowing that I'm going to aggravate certain people on my list. <laughs> I know it's wrong. It's wrong. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna burn in purgatory. Well, actually, I'm not because I have a bunch of indulgences. I've got the get out of hell free card, man. I do. I got it. I got it. That's a whole nother live stream another day. Um, <laughs> sometimes they deserve it. Yes, they do. Sometimes they do deserve it because they've drank the Kool Aid. Blah 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 blah. All right, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. If you and I'll just end with this. If you've not seen the news in the last couple of days. Go, uh, go read about what's happened in the United States. Here, I wish Steve was here uh, about how our government. I know this sounds crazy. Our government has created this new part in the Dep Department of Homeland Security that's the Ministry of Truth. <laughs> in other words, they've basically said free speech. Sorry, that that's just a recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Sorry, Elaine. I don't know what that means. Um, Harry Potter. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Jimmy, start poking, Tim. I want people to get triggered. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are waking up. So we're, we're getting a lot of people wake up. It's going to happen. It's already the balls. Well, the whole thing with Elon Musk. I mean, so if, it, if, if Elon does what he says he's going to do, 
Elon Musk is going to be in, we're all, you and I are all going to be dead. All right. You and I are all going to be dead. And in history books, Elon Musk is going to be probably um, right underneath, uh, as far as importance, he's going to be right underneath the founding fathers. I'm serious. If, if, if it plays out the way I think it's going to play out. All right. If it plays out the way I think it's going to play out. He's, that's how important Elon's going to be. But we, you know, it's too early. Oh, I see. Eric, I got it. Minister. Yes, you're right. Exactly. Minister of Truth. Uh, yes, exactly. Five for five. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. You got it. Uh, okay. So Jimmy says, so we, that's, that's why I'm saying, Jimmy, we, it's a little too early to see, but let's just, we got to let it play out. Got to let it play out. See what's happening. Uh, but that's why I, I couched that. I just said, if he, if he goes through with what he said, he's going to be right up there underneath the founding fathers. I'm serious because of, because of where we were as of a month ago, it's just, it's been less than a month. It's been less than a month. He just made his announcement like this April 10th or 11th, I think, that he had acquired 9% of, of Twitter. And then, then it became a high stakes crap game for the next two weeks. And uh, anyway, crutch word. B because prior to that, uh, the the there was there's no there was no discussion allowed on on all these social media programs, including here. That's why here. I'm, if, if you're new here, I'm not. I don't say this word. You know the word that begins with that letter, and I don't say this word. The word that begins with that letter. Here, you know why? Because I'll get banned. How sad is that? Why don't people want to discuss? Uh, uh, why don't people want to dis have a, a true discussion? Well, because if one side doesn't have the facts and one side operates on lies, and I'm not name naming, I'm just saying if one side has lies and their and their debate sucks. They don't want the people who know what they're talking about to have a voice. That's why this has happened. None of this is hard. Nothing about this is hard. That's what's on the golf ball. Nothing about this is hard to understand. All right, nothing. Why do you think back in the 1930s, they burned all those books in Germany? I mean, what? What? why do you think George Orwell, when he wrote 1984, where do you think he got the inspiration for? Nothing about this is hard. This is the way... I keep telling you, it's all Game of Thrones stuff. If you were in power and you were trying to lord over your, your people, you might not want them to know the truth about certain things, all right? Nothing about this is hard. Nothing about this is new. All right. All right. All right, I got to go. Um, and so, Jimmy... I mean, just so you know, when here's what happens in all honesty, it's just, you know, when you make a statement like that, I mean, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire, just so you know, you say Elon has give money by BlackRock. In other words, what I assume you're saying is that Elon has been given money by BlackRock. All right. Well, you have to prove that. All right. So in the world that I come from in journalism, I'm, you know, I'm a member of the working media. You cannot, well, you can make statements. You can say whatever you want, but if you cannot offer up the proof, and remember, I've been an expert witness for 25 years. So when I go into the courtroom and I make a statement, I have to have the proof. So, so if you say Elon has given money by BlackRock, you have to produce the proof of that. And the proof does not mean pointing me to an article that says that. In other words, you need to show me the canceled checks uh, you need to show me the bank statements, whatever, whatever. I mean, that's how we operate in the real world of 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 the court system. Um, simple as that. So, all right, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm just trying to say, don't say those kind of things unless you can offer. Because if you got into a debate with me about it, that's all I would say. I'd say, okay, Jimmy, that's awesome. Show me the proof. And until such time as you show me the proof, I'm not going to believe you. All right, because I could say, here, I'll give you an example. I could say. If you're sick, I'm serious, if you're sick and you want to get better, 
you need to put leeches on your skin. I mean, you need to, or we need to cut you. I'm going to cut your wrist and I'm going to bleed maybe a pint of blood out of you. And um, you're going to probably get better because you've got some bad blood in you, man. So we now, that's what they used to do. But that we now know, no, 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 no. That's, that's not a fact. It doesn't work. It's not true. <laughs> Bloodletting is bad. <laughs> All right. It doesn't work. Or I could say, you know what? The flipping earth is the center of the solar system. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I mean, look. I mean, look at the flipping sun. It comes up and it goes around us. The moon. The moon comes up, goes around us. We must be the center of the flipping universe or the solar system. Nope. Not true. <laughs> All right. So in other words, <laughs> so stop. So I'm just saying, don't say things that you cannot back up. That's all. Simple as that. All right. Got to go. Thanks for being here. Had a great time today. Hour and a half almost. It's amazing. Thanks for being here. I'm Tim Carter. This has been Ask the Builder. And uh, I'm going to go uh, to the Deerfield County Fairgrounds. See you later. I'll be here on Monday.